I think that Derek is, I think Derek is the kind of poet that, the one thing I can say um, I think of immediately. First and foremost, I would like to talk about um, Derek Brown as narcissist. Derek is someone who feels like he can embrace everybody. He's such a good man. He's just, the word I want to use is jolly, but that's the, that doesn't work. <laughs> that's not the right word. I think that Derek is the people's poet. So much of his personality is coming through in the pages that when I read poems by Derek, I feel like we are having a conversation. I feel like he's speaking directly to me. And how did he develop those chops? Because he, he, he came well read and always reading. He came already from uh, an MFA background, studying with great poets like Cornelius Eady or Myra Sklaru. I feel like he listens so well that those voices that he recreates come through in a way that feels so true. Because he is such a witness, to whatever experience he's talking about. Young brother in an iceberg t-shirt and jeans gets into it with a beefy Italian cat. Onlookers drag their feet, becoming turkey vultures, their necks craning. A lanky brother breaks the circle, reasoning with iceberg slim. Nah, son, fuck him. Let's go to Tamaris. Plenty young as it's Tamaris. Beefaroni wastes no time, that's the word faggot. Fly, a clay pigeon hurled into the dimension of no tape backs. Mm. There's a Greek chorus of ooh. Iceberg's jaws tighten. Nah, son, fuck that shit, hold my pizza. The one thing that Derek really just sort of radiates is kind of a peacefulness. For the last three years, Derek's been coming in to Hart Middle School during the school day. He usually brings in a text, and the kids read the text, discuss the text, and then there's a writing prompt for a way for them to respond to the text. All right, we ready? Usually Derek will uh, respond to the same prompt, and then when all the kids are finished reading their examples of their writing, Derek reads his. And it changes everything in the after-school program when the kids can, first of all, they see what the exercise was intended to be, and second, they get a little model of what to strive for. We're going around with it. Oh, I get it, man. I get it. Blame comfort. Blame the city of coffee houses and lounges. Blame ego and pride and all that clever shit. Blame self. Blame the crafty inner only child and his addiction to, to head pats and pleasing. Blame the anxious inner prospector and gold fever. Blame the voice that wants to sound like a poet but not sound like a poet, wanting to sound like a poet. Blame distractions. But again, that brings it back to self, doesn't it? I think Wisdom Teeth is a book that uh, all types of people can, can, can get into. Uh, different generations. Wisdom Teeth is fresh because it is a critical look at our collective experience, I would say as part of this hip-hop generation, um, with so much less cynicism than a lot of other critical responses to our, to our time. Derek always offers a fresh viewpoint. He's always coming at a question from a different angle. No matter, no matter what the question is, he's answering it from an angle that you weren't expecting. This is a strong voice of a young black man talking about the pieces of DC. I mean, you're talking about uh, a poet who has mastered a sense of history, a sense of literature, uh, a sense of popular culture, and all of that serious highfalutin poetic stuff infused with a sense of humor. You can't get any better than that. There's a lot of wisdom in wisdom teeth.